Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about Google Bard and I'll show you seven different ways in which it is uniquely better than ChatGPT. Now the first version of Bard was released pretty recently and Google had a big day of a lot of news yesterday and while they still call it an experiment, I am one of the few people who believe Bard will surpass ChatGPT's capabilities in the future. Now this is a controversial topic, but why I believe that is because Google has been the leader of search for a long time. And what that means that it has a lot of data. That means usage data, data from different kinds of websites, data from different products, and all kinds of advertisers. And as Google's models get better, I believe that BARD will be the place to go for all kinds of text-based generative AI usage. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, I encourage you to sign up to my newsletter. I'm working on a few hand-drawn AI workflows that I create for myself that will soon be available to you via this newsletter. All right, let's get started. So BARD is accessible to anybody with a Gmail account. And all you need to do is to go to this link called bard.google.com and sign up. And you don't need to get on any wait list and it's instantly available to you. And once you're inside, it looks pretty similar to ChatGPT or any other chat-based tools that are out there right now. Okay, so the first unique feature that Bard has, which I believe I'll use quite a bit, is this microphone icon. So you can use your voice to type something out here because I have been using Amazon's Echo speaker since its first generation came out in 2016. So I have been kind of giving out voice prompts to my smart speaker for quite a long time. So when you click on this microphone button and you provide a prompt, you can type out the prompt using your voice. All you need to do is to click on this microphone icon right here. And if your browser does not have the right permissions, it's going to bring out this pop-up and you have to click allow. So to start off, I'm going to ask a simple prompt. Who won the Football World Cup in 2022? Okay, it says Argentina won the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar, defeating France. Lionel Messi was named the player of the tournament. So this is a short and succinct answer which answers my question and gives me more information that I need. Let me try another prompt related to all the news that came out recently with Google. Google came out with a lot of AI news and products. I would like a summary of all the new products that came out and why they are better than currently existing products. Okay, it says Google AI announced a number of new products and features in May, including BARD, which is the large language model, Duet AI, a suit of AI-powered tools for businesses, Project Game Face, a hands-free AI-powered gaming mouse, IO Flip, an AI-designed card game, including the ability to understand natural language queries. The next feature that is unique to BARD that I think in the long run it will do better is just using the internet. And as you might know, ChatGPT is currently trained up to 2021. And even though they're bringing out different kinds of plugins that will let it access the web, what I believe is since BARD is a product of Google, Google has been leading search for quite a while. So the way BARD will use the internet will be distinctly different than how ChatGPT will use the internet. So in the long run, I believe BARD's internet use capabilities will be distinctly different and better than ChatGPT. Let's try this out using something which happened recently, which ChatGPT will probably not be able to find. What happened with Donald Trump and CNN recently? So this is an event which happened very recently and I vaguely heard about it. I do not know too much about it. So let's see if Bard can answer my questions. Okay, it says on May 10th, Donald Trump held a town hall on CNN. The town hall was moderated by Caitlin Collins and it was Trump's first major interview since leaving office. And I think Bard did a pretty effective job at summarizing what happened. 
without needing me to browse a bunch of websites which may be paywalled to learn what happened with this town hall. Let me test out something else which happened recently and this is what it is useful for. Sometimes I might be hearing vague information about something that happened and I don't care enough to learn and research and read news articles from different sources which may or may not be biased. So I'll probably just go ahead and go to BARD and ask it to give me a summary. So for instance, it can be as vague as what is Tucker Carlson doing right now? So Tucker Carlson has been on the news recently because he parted ways with Fox News and I have no idea what the future holds for him. So let me see what Bard responds with this. All right, so Tucker Carlson is currently hosting a new show on Twitter called Tucker Carlson Today. The show is available to watch for free on Twitter and it's also available on a subscription basis on Fox Nation's streaming service. So I definitely did not know this was going on. I just vaguely know that Tucker Carlson's time on the TV show has ended. And as you see, Bard has access to current affairs and what's going on right now. So I don't have to worry about different kinds of websites and ad blockers. To learn the basic news about something I don't care about too much, but I just want to know enough to kind of know what's going on. All right, now the third way that I think BARD will be pretty useful, which is related to this internet use, is summarizing articles on the web. For example, I have this article by San Francisco Examiner on something going on in Golden Gate Park. And as you see, there's a lot of pop-ups and ads that are going on in this website. And sometimes these articles are paywalled as well, but I don't care enough to pay for these subscriptions usually. I just wanna know a gist of what's in the article. So what I can do is I can just copy paste this link and say, summarize this article. So as I mentioned before, BARD is a product of Google. So it's gonna be really good at parsing through text on different websites. So overall, I think it'll do better in the long run than ChatGPT, which might be really good at text, but maybe not as great as parsing text on the internet. So here it says, here's the summary of the article, San Francisco to expand summer concerts in Golden Gate Park. The San Francisco Parks Department is planning to expand its summer concert series. Let me change this to bullet points and make this better. I actually made a spelling mistake as well, but that should be okay. This is AI. Okay, so it gave me the same information in bullet points because that's better readability wise for me. It says the San Francisco Recreation and Park Department is planning to expand its summer concert series. It's going to be called Summer in the City. It will be held in DeYoung Museum with a capacity of 10,000 people. The first series will be held on June 10th and feature the band called Lumineers. Now you see this can get pretty useful, right? Because if there are free tickets to a concert in San Francisco, those might sell out pretty fast. So here when the tickets come out, you can just request Bard to provide you with that website link and you can just complete the reservation without having to scour the internet to find out what the current website will be. And BARD being an AI tool will hopefully give you the correct website to complete that process. All right, the next way that I think BARD is potentially better than ChatGPT is that it provides its responses in multiple drafts on the first go. Remember when you try something on ChatGPT and you're not happy with the results, you have to click regenerate and do that multiple times until you find something you're happy with. But with BARD, you can get three drafts with every single generation. So let's go back to some of the generations we just made. So here, if you click this button called View Other Drafts, you're gonna see for that same article summarization and bullet points, there are three different drafts that were provided to you. So here's the first draft which I read. Here's the second one where the sentences kind of changed a little bit of structure. And here's the third one where maybe the sequence of these bullet points changed a little bit. Now there's something else worth noticing about these drafts. You see when the prompts are kind of factual and direct, 
there are no multiple drafts. So who won the World Cup in 2022 does not have three drafts. And nor does this prompt about what Tucker Carlson is doing right now. This is because Bard kind of understands that you're just looking for news versus different kinds of drafts for an article. So if I try something else like write a 500 word article on Sundar Pichai's accomplishments. You're going to see that this prompt has responded me with three different drafts because an article can have tons of variations and you might not like the first variation so you can at least get three drafts to look through before you try this again. Here we have the first draft which says Sundar Pichai is the CEO. He has been in the position since 2015. The second draft mentions more of a background of Sundar Pichai versus what he has done in Google. Here it mentions he was born in Madurai in India. He earned his degree in metallurgical engineering from IIT. He then moved to the US where he earned his master's and PhD. And the third draft is another variation of the same thing and it kind of cuts out a little bit of where he's coming from. As you see, all of these drafts are actually pretty nice, but you do have the option to choose from at least three on the first try. And if you don't like it, you can of course click regenerate and it's gonna generate the whole thing again three times and it's gonna come up with another set of three articles. All right, the next unique feature that I think Bard will potentially do better is summarizing code from GitHub directly. For example, I have this GitHub repo of Baby AGI, which is open source, and there's a ton of code here. All I can do is to copy this repo and then say, explain me the basic idea of this repo. All right, it says this repository you linked is for a project called BBEGI, which is an attempt to create large language model that can learn and grow like a human child. So this is a good overview and it might have gotten a bunch of the information from the actual text here. And now if you wanna go deeper in the code, for example, this folder called baby coder and go to this file called babycoder.py and copy this link right here. And now I can say, explain me what's happening here. Okay, it says the code you linked is for a program called Baby Coder, which is a tool that can be used to teach a large language model how to code. It is still under development. And here is a detailed explanation of how Baby Coder works. It says it generates some random code. It starts by generating a random piece of code, which is generated by randomly selecting tokens from a vocabulary of tokens. The vocabulary includes keywords, operators, variables. It then evaluates the code is evaluated by the LLM. The LLM evaluates the code by finding whether the code is syntactically and semantically correct. Then it improves the code generation. The LLM uses the feedback to improve its code generation skills. Baby Coder is a powerful tool that can be used to teach LLMs how to code. Now this is just a small test, but sometimes when you go to public repos for these open source projects, you might not understand what's going on because it's not obvious because the documentation is sometimes not good and people might not have found time to document what's happening in an individual piece of code. So all you need to do is to link that exact file, ideally on a public repo, and then link it to Bard and ask it what's going on. And it will probably do a decent job explaining you at least an overview of what's happening so you can at least proceed from there. I think this is a unique feature that Bard has where it can parse these GitHub files and figure out what's going on. Like I mentioned before, Bard is from Google, so its parsing capabilities and understanding capabilities for text is gonna be much, much advanced than a lot of other companies. All right, the next feature that Bard has that will potentially make it better than ChatGPT is this feature called export response. So we just got this response from Bard trying to explain me this piece of code 
And if you click this button called export response, you can now export this to both docs or add this as a draft to Gmail. So let's try out both. If I click export to docs, it says in the bottom, new document has been generated. And if I click open in docs, it opens this entire response in a Google Docs spreadsheet. So if I do some prompts on BARD and find some useful results, I can just export this directly on Google Docs, which I already use quite a bit. So I can just start editing this document for my future work and not have to worry about getting this on a text file or a PDF file, which has to be then imported and also formatted for different kinds of documents. So this is very useful to me and it saves the actual prompt as the title. I'm not sure how that's going to work if the prompt is really long, but for this one, it saves this document as explain me what's happening here with the GitHub repo as the topic of my Google Doc. Now let's try the same thing as a draft on Gmail. So if I click draft in Gmail, it says new email created open Gmail. Now if I click this, it just copies that entire generation on a draft on Gmail. And again, it adds this prompt as a title of my email and all the things that it generated in the body. Now I can again work and edit this out if I were to send this to someone else or even to myself. And given that I use Gmail on a daily basis, I think this is going to be a really useful functionality to add to my workflow. And to wrap it up, the last feature which I think Bard will eventually get really good at is doing further research after a prompt generation. For example, this one is a prompt that I asked about Sundar Pichai and I got a good response, but maybe I want to do more research on this prompt. I can click on this button called Google it, which I have been doing for years. So if I click this right there, it's going to give me some topics related to the prompt that I just used. For example, Sundar Pichai's accomplishments in Google. What are three of Pichai's accomplishments? What is the contribution of Sundar Pichai to leadership? And I can now proceed with these searches. For example, let's try this one. And now it's going to copy paste that suggested topic on my Google search engine. And I can now proceed with this research like I'm used to. So I think BARD is a great example of how to use prompts on generative AI tools along with traditional Google research. And the best part is this does not require any more selling. Google has been the primary search engine for people for quite a few years. So people are used to Googling something. So when they use BARD, they can just proceed with researching on whatever prompt they have been working on. So even though ChatGPT is integrated into Bing and Microsoft is doing a really good job at promoting the Edge browser, people have been used to Google for quite some time. So if BARD delivers on quality of results from its prompts, which I do believe it's going to get there soon. BARD along with Google will be a deadly combination and not a lot of companies will be able to compete with Google at least on its search engine. So I'm really excited to see where BARD goes in the next few months. So hopefully I gave you a good understanding of how BARD works and made you a little bit more optimistic on the future of Google and BARD. Even though I love ChatGPT myself and I think it's really good, I do think in the long run, BARD has a lot of potential and can probably surpass OpenAI due to Google's long history in search and the amount of data that it has. All right, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you got some value from it. And if you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter and YouTube channel and make sure to click like on this video. Till my next video, thank you so much.